Hi there, welcome back. Previously I created the Active Caption template to help make Alex Hormoza style captions in DaVinci Resolve. Success on YouTube takes time and effort. And this time, I'm going to show you how to animate the captions with just a few clicks using the new updated caption template. To easily show the effect result, I put an ocean blue background on the timeline. Add the new active caption to the track above. As you see in the inspector, I've added some new settings in the effect control page. For this demo, I will increase the font size a bit. The first one is the global color support. When this option is checked, the global color defined here will be used for all text in the caption. Next one is the separate font selection for individual text styles. This is handy when you want to use different fonts for words in your captions. And the last is the animation control. With these settings, we can easily animate the text size, color and background without keyframing or splitting the clip. When animation is enabled, these controls can be used to adjust the timing of animations. Next we will look into these settings in detail and demonstrate how to set up and control the animations. This effect heavily uses lots of expressions and calculations. It can be a bit slow and laggy. It would be a good idea to turn on the smart cache while working on this effect. Instead of using a slider to control the right on animation, as in the previous version, I changed this to a checkbox to have the same control style for animations. Turning on the right on option will create a simple right on effect, revealing the caption word by word. The right on timing is controlled by the animation time defined for each word in the caption. Default delay is 10 frames for each word or each line, depending on the style level we use. The next animation is to animate the text size. When it's enabled, the text automatically zooms in and zooms out. There are two animation styles we can choose from. The first one has a dynamic springy motion. While the second one simply resizes the text up and down. The size factor controls how big the text will zoom in. This color animation sets the caption base color to the color defined here. When the clip plays, it changes the text colors to the ones defined in the style definitions. We can enable the global color to have an effect of color highlighting the word from the beginning to the end. If we change the animation color to transparent, we can have an effect of light up words. There are two styles for the color animation. The default mode changes the word color to the target color and switches back afterwards. But if we want to keep the target colors, we can choose the second style, which changes the text colors to the target colors and keeps them for the rest of the time. The last animation is for the background color. Turning it on will create a dynamic bouncy background moving from one word to the next. And we can change the background color to anything we like. Next, let's take a look at how we can adjust the timing of the animations. For example, I want to keep the first word highlighted for a longer period of time. Make sure the first text style is selected. Increase the animation time, let's set it to 30 frames, which is one second in this case. Wait for the render cache. Now the first word is highlighted with the background for 30 frames. If we feel that the animation started too soon or too late for the word, we can use these two buttons to manually define the starting and ending position. Let's say the word essential is highlighted too early. It should start here. Once the playhead is at the wanted position, 
we can click the start animation button to set the animation start time. The animation start parameter is now showing underneath to indicate that it's now manually set for the word. Moving the playhead to the position where we want to end the animation and click end animation button to set the end position. The animation time is recalculated based on the start and end position. Now the animation starts at our manually defined position and lasts for the period of time controlled by the animation time parameter. Similarly, if we want to change the duration of the second word, we can select the second style. Move the playhead to the position where animation should stop for the second word. Click the end animation button to recalculate the duration. We don't really need to manually assign the animation start time. When it's not set, the start time will be automatically calculated based on the settings in the previous words. Unless we want to create some gap or overlap. Let's say the word caption should light up here. Select style 3. Click the start animation button. We now have a moment with no highlighting word. To remove the manual start time setting, simply reset the animation start parameter to zero. This will hide the parameter so that we know this word is now set for auto timing. In addition to using one animation at a time, we can also check multiple options to create some unique animation styles. For example, we can enable both size and background animations and get something like this. The size changes too much, let's reset the size factor to default. And increase a bit of the line spacing. Also change the size style to 1. Now it looks better. OK, these are the four types of animations included in the effect. We can also use other methods to add more animation effects to the caption, as we showed in the previous video. For example, apply an essential animator effect to the clip and check the pulse loop animation. Check pulse angle. Lower the pulse strength. This should be good. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.